Hello, welcome to today's live episode of the Trinity Podcast with me, Ben. It's only going to be me today. Rob is currently moving house. Very, very exciting. He's just completed on a on a house move, so he's going to be he's literally moving furniture, uh, carrying refrigerators, doing everything needed to move from where he currently lives into his new place. So that's all very, very exciting. Um, but yeah, so today I'm going to be covering just a quick preview. Um, I'm going to be giving you eleven proven strategies that we've used with thousands and thousands of women that can help you drop one to two dress sizes or lose one to two stone over the next 12 weeks without dieting, without having to go to the gym, without starving yourself, without banning any of your favorite foods. These are just strategies that work specifically for women over 40. So let me have a look. I've got two people watching here. So if you're watching live, uh, feel free to comment. Let me know how uh, how you're doing. How are you doing today? How's your day going so far? Usually Rob's doing the comments here. But yeah, I've got yeah, I've got it. Give me a, give me a thumbs up. Give me a wave. Give me a comment. Let me know you're on. Let me know you're watching. And as we go through, if you do have any questions or anything that you want to post, just feel free to post those up on the Facebook as well. But awesome. I'm just going to. Um, I may as well get started. I'm going to jump straight into it today and just get get straight on board with today's topic. So we have spent, so myself and Rob in Trinity and with Fit Over 40, we spent the past six plus years helping busy professional women in their 40s and 50s to beat over 40 weight gain for good. And it can be extremely frustrating when diets and exercise that used to work in the past stop having any effect. We work with so many women who they try all the things that used to work in their 20s or 30s, different diets, different programs, different approaches, but they just find that they don't see any results from all of their hard work, which can be incredibly frustrating. If you can relate to that at all, and if this is happening to you, then it's probably not your fault. And because of this, we did actually put together, first of all, I'm putting together this podcast now that is going to give you 11 proven tactics that we've used with our clients to get the scales moving and drop one to two dress sizes in under three months. And these are all women in their 40s and 50s. But as well as that, we've put together a free guide, which also goes through these 11 tactics. So if you want to grab a copy of that guide, just head to www.fit40info.com and you can grab all the details of that there. But today I'm just going to go through these 11 proven tactics and give you hopefully something that you can put into action and just start seeing some quick results um, starting from next week. So straight into tactic number one then. So the first tactic is to eliminate temptation with the cupboard cleanse. So one of the biggest challenge that our clients face or that women over 40 face um, is avoiding snacking and getting into bad al- bad habits with eating and drinking, especially when you've got a busy career, which kind of pushes you to against that pushes you towards those less healthy foods. And not only do these types of food contain tons of extra calories, which can make it very, very easy to overconsume them and then lead to weight gain, but both processed foods and alcohol can also disrupt your hormones. And this is specifically or more of a problem if you're age 40 or above. And this can completely put the brakes on any results you're trying to see with your body. So for most of our clients, at once, you know, they might have good intentions at the start. They start out with loads of willpower, loads of motivation, but when work gets stressful, when life gets stressful, they might find themselves pushed towards those unhealthy foods and find themselves saying yes to things that they would probably, they'd be better off saying no to. So what we find as a strategy to help eliminate cravings, to help get you eating better foods and avoiding feeling dragged towards those unhealthy foods which can derail your progress is to do something that we call the cupboard cleanse. This is a strategy that we use with all of our clients with great success. So it's very, very simple. All you need to do, it's literally, you know, it's it's in the name. You go to your cupboards, you go to your fridge and just clear out all of the unhealthy food, all of the unhealthy treats, all of the unhealthy snacks. And this isn't like a permanent solution. You don't need to, it's not like you're never going to have alcohol again. You're never going to have chocolate again. You're never going to have any treats or snacks again. But a temporary break can kind of disrupt the cycle of craving these unhealthy foods and it can make it easier to get into a better routine going forwards. So as well as kind of resetting those cravings, we do often see clients lose, you know, five to 10 pounds within a couple of weeks of completing this cupboard cleanse process when combined with the second tactic, which I'm gonna go through in a second. But just wanna give you a, a, an example of how effective this can be. So one of our current clients, Caroline said, after doing this cupboard cleanse, 
She lost half a stone since starting Trinity. I can see such a difference around my waist and generally feel fitter and healthier. Happy that I stayed on track and did all my workouts and thought transformers feeling great. So yeah, literally remove the snacks, remove the alcohol from your cupboard for a period of a week or two. And that's it's, it's going to reset your food choices, reset your cravings and probably get you some quick and easy results. And then if you combine this with the second tactic, so tactic number two is to do exercise that optimizes hormones, that helps you tone up and helps you to get the scales moving again. So if women in their 20s and 30s, almost any kind of exercise will work. So gym classes, HIIT training, running, swimming, netball, body pump, couch 5K, it doesn't really matter what you do, you're still going to see, you're going to see some results. You're going to see the weight falling off. But unfortunately, for women in their 40s and 50s, changing hormones, so reduced estrogen and reduced progesterone levels, combined with the increased cortisol levels, which is cortisol is the stress hormone, these shifting hormones can make weight loss a lot more difficult. And on top of that, you know, a lot of the women we work with who are age 40 and above are also struggling with maybe aching joints, aching knees, hip pain, back, back pain. And these little kind of niggling injuries can make exercise like jogging, HIIT training, gym classes, anything what's kind of high impact that you're jumping up and down, it can, it can make those a really bad idea because it can just lead to further, further injury and further pain. So most of our clients kind of found that things that used to work for them were just not getting them the results that they wanted anymore. Maybe you can relate to that. But the reality is that women over 40 can't get away with doing just any exercise to lose weight. If you're over 40, you need to focus on exercise that rebalances your hormones, that increases your metabolism. And by doing that, that's what's going to get the scales moving. That's what's going to get things going in the right direction. So rather than just doing exercise, you need to be doing the right exercise. And inside of our Fit Over 40 program, our clients use a special kind of resistance training that we call LIST training, and that stands for Low Impact Strength Training. And that counteracts many of the side effects of these shifting hormones and side effects of getting older. So I'll give you another example. This is from Susan, who said after after just doing this for just one week, I've really enjoyed the workouts, even though I was slightly intimidated about doing them at the start, I'm impressed how much I've worked my whole body using very little equipment, and it made me realize that I don't necessarily need the gym to get a good workout. So yeah, you don't necessarily need to go to the gym, you don't need to do anything that's difficult, or anything that kind of really punishes your body um, in order to see amazing results. And the benefits of this type of training, so low impact strength training, which you know, translated basically means lifting weights in a very a slow and controlled way. But this will help you to increase muscle tone, rebuild metabolism. It will help you to lose inches off your off your body, off your waist, off your hips, off your thighs. It will help you to rebalance hormones. It will keep stress levels low. And it will also protect your joints. And also, you don't need to spend five to six days a week or anything more exercising. You just need to do this two to three times a week, maybe 30 to 45 minutes per session. And we regularly see clients drop a dress size or more in three months or less, just like our client Claire was able to. So another quote from Claire, she said, before I started Trinity, I was a size 12 and weight was going up. I was about 10 stone and felt very wobbly and in need of shaping up. I was feeling a little fed up and needed help. Now I feel great. I've lost a little weight and I've lost inches from my waist, hips and bust. I'm looking after myself and love the food and exercises I've been doing. I'm feeling a lot leaner and stronger and love the way my clothes are fitting now. So tactic number two is to do exercise that optimizes the hormones, helps you tone up and helps you get the scales moving. And the type of exercise you want to do or what we recommend and what's going to work for you is list training. So low impact strength training. Tactic number three is to eliminate dieters thinking to, de to defeat self-sabotage. So have you ever eaten something bad or gone off track with your diet and then all of these negative thoughts start creeping in. So you start thinking things like, sod it, I've ruined it all, or what's the point, or I failed, or it's too hard, or I'll start again on Monday. These negative thought patterns can lead to a chain reaction that then leads to you going off track. So you think, sod it, I've ruined it all, and then that leads you to feelings of being you know, demotivated. The actions you may take from feeling demotivated are you eat more, you drink more, and then the result you get from that is that you gain weight. So all of these negative thoughts, this diet is thinking, can lead to self-sabotage, it can lead to you undoing your progress, and it can lead to you not getting the results that you're looking for. So for most people, if you stay in this cycle, 
where you allow these thoughts to kind of run away with themselves, it can leave you stuck in a loop where you have these negative thoughts, they lead to negative feelings, negative actions, negative results, and then the negative results lead to more negative thoughts. And it just kind of goes round and round and you just get stuck in this negative cycle. So what works much better is to be able to break this cycle before it leads to negative actions and before it leads to negative results. So with our Fit Over 40 clients, we use a tool called the Thought Transformer to break the vicious cycle of self-sabotage and eradicate dietist thinking so that even if someone slips up, they can draw a line under it and move on without beating themselves up and without emotional eating. So the Thought Transformer process is basically looking at what those thoughts are. So, you know, I failed. And it says, it examines that thought and says, you know what, have I really failed? Have I failed? Have I failed? Have I ruined it all by having that? one chocolate biscuit, and it, it makes you question those thoughts. Um, and it makes you turn it into maybe an alternative version of it, which is, you know, one treat doesn't ruin a good week. And you could turn that negative thought into a positive thought. Instead, you feel motivated. Instead, you take positive actions, and then you get the results that you're looking for. So this is just one of the tools that our client Patricia used to drop from a size 14 to a size eight and also she saw massive improvement in her business profits and also in her marriage at the same time. So Patricia said, I'm now a size eight, which is beyond what I wanted to achieve. My marriage is a lot better. I'm much happier with that side of things. Work-wise, we've had the best year profit-wise that we've ever had, and I don't think it can be just a coincidence. The thing that's changed is me. So it just goes to show, if you can change your thinking, you can have a massive, massive impact on all areas of your life. So tactic number four then is to focus on quick and easy meals, not complicated, time-consuming diet food. So a lot of different diets and programs require cooking from scratch, using hard to find ingredients and spending hours meal prepping in the kitchen each week. And that's fine for somebody who's got a really, really simple lifestyle who doesn't really have much going on. Maybe someone in their twenties, maybe a student, for example, who's just not got a lot going on in their life. But for women with high pressure jobs, families to support, um, you know, and a lot going on, which like most of the women we work with are super busy. They've got loads and loads going on and loads and loads on their plate. It, you, a lot of the ladies we work with just don't have the time to, you know, be doing loads and loads of meal prepping and loads and loads of difficult cooking day in, day out. And if you can't stick to something long term, the results you get are only ever going to be temporary. So if you can't, you know, stick to the exercise plan you're following or the nutrition plan you're following long term, at some point you're going to stop doing it. And if you stop doing it, you're probably going to undo your results and end up back at square one. So if you want to lose the weight and actually keep it off, whatever approach you follow needs to fit around your lifestyle rather than taking over it. And the reality is to see amazing results, the meals you eat don't need to be fancy or they don't need to be complicated. And many of the the women that we work with, we just show them how to make simple food that takes, you know, five to 10 minutes to cook so that instead they can focus on their careers, focus on their family life, focus on their social lives. And we also teach them how to grab food on the go in supermarkets, from service stations, high street chains, um, restaurants, basically how to eat things that are quick and easy, but still make it work for them and still see amazing results. So to optimize hormone levels and to trigger weight loss for women over 40, Everything you eat basically needs to include a balance of protein, healthy carbs, and fat. So all of these things need to be just kind of all in balance. So we're not going to any extremes, cutting out carbs or cutting out fats or anything like that. Um, and you want to eat meals which are also going to be filling and which are also going to keep your energy levels high for hours afterwards. And that's exactly what Trinity member Karen was able to do. So Karen said, I'm half a stone lighter. Uh, I'm really happy with my results to date, feel much better, a lot less bloated, more energy, more confidence, I'm motivated to continue, enjoying the workouts and the mini thought transformers. So Kara managed to see all those results after just a couple of weeks as well. So you can see really, really quick results if you can, if you know what type of meals you need to eat um, to get results. So tactic number four is to focus on quick and easy meals rather than complicated and time-consuming diet food. Tactic number five then is to shield yourself from stress to avoid emotional eating and drinking. So what tends to happen when people's stress levels get too high in our experience 
is, you know, when when you're in kind of back to back meetings most days, you're managing people, you're only getting kind of ten or even less minutes for your lunch break each day. Um, reporting to loads and loads of people in the company, having no downtime, and then also dealing with the pressure of family life. So other family members taking kids to and from activities, doing cooking, chores, cleaning, etc. All of that can be a lot. It can be a lot to, to deal with and a lot to cope with at once. And for a lot of people, this stress basically just keeps building up and it has nowhere to go except for a lot of people they turn to eating and drinking that stress. So they eat, they drink that stress. And also the high level of stress just causes them to feel constantly exhausted. So the, so the last thing on their mind is, I, I need to go and do a workout, I need to get my steps in, I need to stay active. And it's kind of like filling up a bath and just leaving the taps on, running stress into this bath and never turning them on. So the bath fills up and up and up and up and up. And eventually it gets too, it gets too much and it all goes wrong, it overflows out of the bath and it causes a disaster. And that's when you'll find yourself ordering a takeaway or opening a massive sharing back of crisps and a bottle of wine and just having it all to yourself on the sofa. And neither of those things are really gonna help you to achieve those fitness goals. So the solution to this is really just to have an outlet for stress. So we do this with our clients using what we call the stress shield, which is a daily tool that just takes five minutes a day. But if you want, like a quick thing that you can put into action, what I would recommend is just, if you can do a bit of simple meditation each day, so it can be anything. There's so many apps these days, Headspace and Calm, and uh, one's called Insight Timer. There's all these different apps. If you can just find a simple app that will just let you do a few minutes of deep breathing and relaxation, taking a bit of time for yourself each day, that will go a long way towards taking that plug out and allowing some of that stress to, to filter out. And as long as you let some of that stress release, it's not gonna build up, it's not gonna to get to that level where it overflows and it should make it much, much easier to stay on track with your nutrition, stay on track with your workouts and then ultimately get the results that you're looking for. So that the stress shield process that we use with our clients, there's it's three simple tools that we use each day. One of those is meditation, but in just a few minutes a day, it's gonna make, it makes a massive, massive difference to their stress levels. And this is just one of the tools that um, Trinity member Caroline used to manage her stress levels and she lost more than four stone by using these tools and putting them in, into action. So Caroline said, I wanted to become lean in a healthy and sustainable way with a program that featured training and which would make me think about what I was eating and would help me with my mindset. I have lost 30.25 inches over my body and 26.4 kilos, which is four and a quarter stone reduction in my weight. My confidence has gone through the roof and I feel so much happier now in my own skin. Trinity is everything to me and it has become a way of life. So amazing results there from Caroline. So tactic number five is to shield yourself from stress to avoid emotional eating and drinking. So I'd recommend try and find some form of meditation or some other stress relief that you can do. Make sure you take a bit of time for yourself and anything that's super stressful, just ask yourself like, is there a way that I can change this? Is there something you can change in your job or your family life that will help make things a lot less stressful for you? So tactic number six is to create your own ground, hall, ground rules for alcohol and treats, but you don't really have to cut them out completely. So it's very, very easy for bad habits to get out, out of hand, especially when stress levels are soaring and when life is kind of just work, work, work with very little to enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis. So there are other diets out there which might tell you that certain foods are good and others are bad. But the problem with this is if you label certain foods as bad, then every time you're gonna eat them, you're gonna feel like you failed. You're gonna feel like you know, you've messed it all up, it's all gone wrong, and that can lead to cycles of emotional eating um, and all sorts of other negative things which are not necessarily gonna get you what you want. So I think it's better, rather than labeling some foods as good and something as, as bad, is just realizing that you know some things are healthier and they have less calories in and some things are less healthy and they have more calories in but you can find a balance between those two types of food and if you can do that you don't have to cut out anything and you can still see the results that you want even if you're over 40 even if you're dealing with changing hormones and all these other all those other challenges that can bring so a lot of our clients are able to enjoy things like chocolate things like wine and still lose a couple of stone over 84 days or less However, this doesn't happen overnight. There's kind of two steps, to, two stages to get to this stage of being, being able to find that balance with your nutrition. So the first step we take 
that gets our clients back in control into a, a healthy eating habit is what I mentioned before. So it's doing that cupboard cleanse. So remove all the unhealthy foods from your house. And if you want kind of a quick guideline on what foods you should revo- remove, anything that contain, contains wheat, alcohol, dairy, and sugar as a rule of thumb tends to be something that if you remove it, you're probably going to see better results. So remove all the wheat, alcohol, dairy, and sugar. Try to stick to that for one to two weeks. And that will help to kind of reset your food choices and eliminate cravings and then allow you to kind of shift back into eating better. So then after that, we recommend you set clear ground rules to find an ongoing balance with your food. So for example, you know this is going to be different for everybody, but what I would base this on is if you can find a balance where 20% of the time you're allowing yourself to be more flexible with food. So for example, I'm going to go to the cinema this evening to see the Fast and Furious 9 to my uh, fiance's huge disappointment. Um, but at the cinema, I'm probably going to have a, a large thing of popcorn. I'm going to enjoy my food at the cinema. I'm going to allow myself that bit more flexibility. But as long as you can keep those treats, keep those snacks into kind of 20% of your food, and then the other 80% of the time, you're having good, healthy food. So we're having you know lean sources of protein, so all kind of meat, fish, eggs, etc. Good carbs, so potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, oats. Um, healthy fats so olive oils avocados nuts and then plenty of fruits and vegetables so all fruits and vegetables are pretty much absolutely fine if as long as 80 percent of the food you're eating is that good quality healthy food and 20 percent is the less healthy stuff that tends to be a good balance that for most people um means that they can enjoy their food but they're no longer like craving things like chocolate and they're also able to see the weight falling off and see amazing results just like Haley did who was a working mum of two um, well, two very energetic boys. So Haley said, since joining Trinity, my energy levels have increased and I found my confidence improved. I want this to continue and for my children to have a fit mum. I'm so much happier when I train, eat well and have a good mindset. I now have a totally different way of thinking now as well as not being so hard on myself. So that completely, she was managed to completely turn around everything. But tactic number six then is to create your own ground rules for alcohol and treats, but don't cut them out completely. So if you can stick to 20%, Keep your alcohol and treats to 20% or less, and 80% of the time you eat healthy foods, that tends to be a good balance. So tactic seven is to optimize sleep and reduce cravings to, to optimize sleep to reduce cravings and boost energy levels. So sleep and your hormones are very, very closely linked. And if you're currently experiencing perimenopause or menopause, you'll likely have noticed that your sleep is far less consistent. A lot of the women that we work with they find themselves waking in the middle of the night. They find themselves maybe experiencing night sweats, uh, waking up and being unable to get back to sleep. And this kind of broken sleep can lead to fatigue, but it can also disrupt the hunger hormones. So leptin and ghrelin are the, the hormones that control um, your cravings, your appetite, and also your feeling of fullness. So if you sleep less than seven to eight hours per night, you will have much higher cravings and you're not going to feel full even when you've eaten a big portion of food. So if you're trying to lose weight, it's not ideal to have these hunger hormones not in the right balance. But your hormones are also affected by certain lifestyle choices, things that can control, things that you can control and things which you can change. So I'm going to go through four, but there's four things you can do which will hopefully help you to get your hormones in the right place, Um, also help you to improve your sleep quality and therefore help you to improve your food choices and improve your results. So the the four things that have a big impact are number one, caffeine. So caffeine has a half-life of six hours, meaning if you drink a cup of coffee, you still have half of the caffeine left in your system after six hours. After 12 hours, you've got a quarter left in your system. After another 18 hours, uh, 18 hours after you've drank it, you're still going to have an eighth of the caffeine left in your system. So it halves every six hours. This means that even if you don't feel it, if you drink a coffee in the afternoon, you're probably still going to be feeling the impact of that coffee on your sleep when you go to bed. So the best thing to do and what we recommend is just cut out highly caffeinated drinks like coffee or Diet Coke or tea after 12 noon. So you know, the easiest way to cut down on caffeinated drinks, I find, is just switch to decaf. So switch your decaf, switch your tea or your coffee to a decaf version. And, you know, you can still enjoy tea and coffee and it's going to taste pretty much the same, but you're just not going to have, not going to experience the, the, 
the caffeine and therefore it's not going to have an impact on your sleep or on your hormones. The second one is alcohol. So alcohol can help people get to sleep, but more than a very, very small amount. So if you have more than kind of one drink, it's going to significantly disrupt your sleep. So, you know, you may feel that you've slept through the night, but it disrupts your actual sleep cycle. So that even if you're sleeping, you're not getting the, the kind of quality deep sleep that your body needs. And as well as that, alcohol can also make hot flushes much worse. So if hot flushes are something that affects your sleep as it is, then alcohol can make that sleep even worse than it usually usually would be. So first one's caffeine, second one's alcohol. Um, the third one is food quality. So processed and sugary foods may give you a quick burst of energy, although this isn't really sustained. Like if you eat processed sugary foods, you'll see a big spike in energy, but then it will drop back down again. But also eating processed foods, sugary foods, can disrupt the hormones um, that cause menopause symptoms. So it can lead to worse sleep quality and increased likelihood of waking up in, in the middle of the night if your food quality is worse. And the fourth one is exercise. It's not rocket science, but people who exercise regularly generally feel more tired in the evenings, which means they get off to sleep quicker and they have a higher, a higher quality of sleep as well. So because they've had a high quality of sleep, they're gonna have more energy, which means they're more likely to exercise, which means they can sleep better. It's kind of a, a cycle. So the way to get into that cycle is to get into a routine of, extra, of improved exercise, which then helps you sleep better and then gets you into that routine. So if you can improve your, reduce your caffeine intake, reduce your alcohol intake, eat better quality food. So again, that 80, 20 rule I mentioned before should be absolutely fine. It's a great place to start. And also get into a habit of regularly exercising. That's going to help you improve your sleep. That's going to help you improve your hormones and that's going to help you improve your results. And these four things, so cutting out caffeine, alcohol, improving food quality, building a regular routine of exercise are all things we work on with our clients inside our Fit Over 40 program. And they often find their sleep gets completely transformed and the weight starts to, to fall off and they start to see the results they wanted, even during tricky stages like, you know, perimenopause or menopause. And again, if you want to, if you would like kind of a, um, a more in-depth version of this that you can read, you can grab a free 11 strategies guide, which goes through all 11 of these strategies by going to www.fit40info.com. And that guide is completely free. Um, and it's free for you to download if you wish. So I'll give you another example of from Catherine who used all of these tips I've been going through to see some great results. So Catherine said, if someone had said to me last Christmas that I would be nearly 10 stone by October, I would not have believed it, but I'm three pounds off and that's great. Uh, and that's from, that's from an initial target, from an initial target of 10 stone 10 for the year. Uh, believe me, if I can do this, anyone can. So Catherine's got down to 10 stone 10. She was only expecting to get to 10 stone and she kind of exceeded all of her expectations. So we're on to tactic number eight. So tactic number eight is to be flexible with your food choices so that it doesn't feel like a hardship. So most diets say that certain foods are good and certain foods are bad and that there are special foods that are going to help you lose weight and some that won't. For example, some approaches will say that carbs are fattening or that you should only eat low fat foods or you need to completely cut sugar out or you need to cut alcohol out complete, completely. And there's a lot of conflicting advice out there and it can start to get very, very confusing. And while there are foods and drinks that do work better for women over 40 with changing hormones, um, the good food and bad food approach is simply a way, or like a roundabout way to reduce your calorie intake. So anything that's based on a point system or, you know, we're going to just cut carbs out or cut fats out or we're going to just stop eating bread, whatever, like simple rules, so a diet or a different program may follow, all they're really aiming to do is reduce some is to reduce the amount that you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis every single fitness approach that helps you lose weight works by getting you to eat slightly less food if you can eat less food than the body needs the body is forced to burn fat for energy and therefore you lose body fat especially if you've also done taken all the steps to kind of get your hormones in the right place with the right type of exercise program and all of the tips that i've mentioned previously um but the problem with it, all of these approaches, so for, let's take like low carbs, for example. If you follow low carbs and then you see amazing results because cutting out carbs has meant you've eaten slightly less food than you normally would, 
as soon as you go back to a life where you eat carbs again, which I mean, most people like to eat carbs at some point, the only reason that you're, you were eating less food was because you were cutting out carbs. So if you go back to eating carbs again, your food intake goes back up to what it was before. And if you suddenly put your food intake back to what it was before, then all the weight that you lost is just gonna come back on. So for many of our clients in the past, what they found is they followed an approach which was you know, no carbs or no fats or some other rule like that. They found that they lost weight, they seen results, but then they've just seen all of that weight pile back on again, and maybe even more, which is obviously not ideal. So what we find works much better for our clients is a flexible approach to their nutrition, where we don't say, you know, you can't have carbs, you can't have fats. We don't label foods good or bad. The most important thing is just finding the right amount for you. So what we do is we help the women that we work with to eat the foods that they like and eat the foods that their family likes so that they can cook with their family as well, not have to eat separately while still balancing their hormones and getting the quantity of food right for them specifically. So every client we put together a specific target for them to aim for with their food, which is exactly right for them. And what that means is they can see results, they can see the scales going down, they can see the weight falling off, but also because we haven't made them cut anything out or do anything really drastic, it's a change that they can keep up long-term, turn into a lifestyle and then see results in the long run. And this is exactly what our client Tony was able to do. So another example, I've got loads and loads of them for you today. What Tony said, before I started Trinity, I was a size 14 and the heaviest I've been as I'd had my third daughter three months earlier. I felt tired, heavy, embarrassed, embarrassed about my size and helpless. But I've lost seven kilos and 16 inches over three months, which feels fantastic. And I never would have achieved it without this program. It's just the right balance of accountability and structure and flexibility to make it sustainable. So yeah, amazing results from Tony there. So tactic number eight is to be flexible with your food choices. So rather than saying no carbs, no fats, no this, no that, allow everything. But the most important thing is just eating the right amount of food for you. So tactic number nine <clears throat> is to move more outside of your workouts in order to lose weight, but do that in a way that also doesn't mess up your hormones. It doesn't, doesn't kind of work against changing hormones. So one thing that gets overlooked by those with busy desk-based jobs is something called NEAT. So NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, which basically means how many calories you burn in your day-to-day -day life. So if I, you know, there's a big difference between if I sat at this desk all day and I spend work on a computer all day and I don't do anything else, or if I decide I'm gonna go for an hour walk at lunchtime or half an hour walk at lunchtime, that little bit of activity, that hour walk or half an hour walk is going to burn a few hundred additional calories. So the more active you can stay outside of your workouts, the more calories you're burning on a day to day basis. And the crazy thing is like getting in steps and just, you know, walking around can burn more calories than a really sweaty and intense cardio class, for example. So for example, like 5,000 steps per day extra will burn an additional 200 calories. So the difference between somebody who does a thousand steps a day and some like just, that would be like very sedentary, sit at a desk, don't move. Or somebody who does 10,000 steps a day, so goes out for a walk at lunchtime and just kind of is more active during the day, is gonna be 400 calories difference between those two people. And if you add that up over a week, that difference is enough to lose almost a pound of body fat every week just from going on a walk at lunchtime, not changing a nutrition, not doing any additional workouts, not doing anything else, just by staying a bit more active, doing a few more steps, you could you could get all of the all of the results that you're looking for over the next few months. So <clears throat> what works really, really well for women over 40 is just doing as much kind of low intensity exercise as you can. And the best form of this is probably just walking. So to burn calories, the best way to do it is just stay active. Just walk, just stay active, uh, move as much as you possibly can, rather than doing things like intense hit sessions and cardio or running or anything like that, which is a bit more intense. You'll also burn calories, but the problem with those kind of intense workouts is that the body sees those as a form of stress. And if you're already stressed with a high pressure job and you know your, your hormones are starting to shift as well, so for women, especially as they get older, your response to stress 
will become three times, will increase three times as much as it will for a man. So women in particular need to be very, very careful about keeping stress levels under control and keeping stress levels low. So with your activity and with your um, exercise, you want to be doing everything in a low impact and kind of gentle way. So tactic nine, move more outside of your workouts to lose weight. What I'd recommend is try and do 5,000 to 10,000 steps per day. You put that alongside that list training I talked about before. You do two to three sessions of that per week. And that's going to be a winning strategy in terms of workouts. That's exactly what PR manager Louisa did, uh, which allowed her to lose one stone in 11 pounds and two dress sizes over a 90 day period. So she said, my overall loss is 11.2 kilos or one stone 11 pounds and a total of 16 inches. I've gone from a generous size 16 to a 14 and even 12 in the right cut. Hello Jigsaw Palazzo Pants. It takes time to see results and I mustn't be derailed by the odd uptick on the scale. So Louise has seen amazing results and it's all down to moving more, doing the right type of workouts, following the right type of nutrition plan and hopefully all of these tactics in this in this podcast will help you to figure out at least some things that you can put into action to help you get some uh, get some results too. So tactic number 10 is to get motivated by setting powerful goals using the clear choice method. So steps one to nine, which I'll recap in a minute, are all great and they do work for women over 40, but if someone's not motivated, none of that's really gonna matter. So you actually have to do these things, you have to put these things into action if you wanna get the scales moving and if you wanna get the results that you're after. But the good news is we have a special tool called the clear choice method, that we've used with thousands of our clients to get laser focused and and re-motivated to lose weight. So there are three key choices to this method to kind of set a really good goal or a really good target because most people are unmotivated because they don't have a goal that they're working towards that's exciting. If you're not working towards something that's exciting, that makes you think like, wow, I really want to achieve that, it's very, very difficult to actually make yourself do it. It's very, very difficult to stick to any any nutrition plan, any workout plan, anything at all, if you're not excited about the result you could get. So three things you can do. Number one, rank where you are right now across three key areas. So we use the areas of fitness, family, and fun. So if you just kind of rank where you are in terms of, for example, uh, your cardio fitness, how do you feel in terms of your strength, in terms of how toned you are, in terms of your your body image, just rank how you feel in terms of fitness, rank how you think feel in terms of family life. Um, you know, is your family life causing you stress or is it is it enjoyable? Um, and then in the fun category, you can look at kind of me time and work-life balance, so rank how you are in there. Second step is then decide where you'd like to rank in each of those three areas, so fitness, family, and fun. How would you, where would you like things to be instead in terms of your strength, in terms of your cardio fitness, in terms of your dress size, in terms of your body image? Write all of that down and kind of paint a picture of where you would like to be in an ideal world. Then the third stage is just to figure out what's in the gap between where you are now and where you'd like to be. So the question to ask yourself is almost what's stopping you from already being there in each of those three areas? So, you know, is it that you don't have the right program? Is it that you're not doing enough exercise? Is it that you're lacking motivation? Is it you're not 100% sure what to do with nutrition? Or you don't know how much food you should be eating for you? So ask yourself what's in the gap. List all of the things that are currently stopping you, that, that are stopping you from getting to where you want to be already. And then from that, you can start setting clear goals to overcome those things. So it might be finding the right program. It might be setting some goals. It might be that you need to cut down your alcohol intake or learn how to have more motivation or willpower. Um, So if you have a goal that's really kind of, a lot of people have goals that are really vague. So for example, they just think, I want to lose some weight. And their strategy to get there might be, try to eat better, drink less and exercise more. So the problem with this is, that goal is quite vague, it's quite hard to measure, but also it doesn't really give them a solid strategy to get to where they want to be. So if this person continues to do exercise and do food and, and eat food that didn't combat or work with their specific situation, for example, if they're over 40, they're struggling with changing hormones and weight gain as a result of that, then they'll likely see poor results. And when you see poor results, it's very easy to lose motivation 
uh, then you'll probably put less effort in, then your results get worse, and it's kind of a cycle that can just drag you down. So it's really important to, to have powerful goals that show you kind of clearly what you're aiming for and also a clear and proven strategy that you know is going to work so that you've got the hope and the belief in that strategy to get to where you want to be. So this is exactly what busy wedding planner Suzanne used to remotivate, uh, get remotivated to lose weight after months of putting an exercise, uh, putting exercise and eating on her back burner. So Suzanne said um, her biggest wins were Seeing the scales move, so she's lost five pounds, has been a great reminder that hard work pays off. It just goes to show that's after the first week as well. So one week she has five pounds down and then that gave her the motivation to then keep going. So not only did Suzanne get remotivated and see those amazing results, um, but yeah, she had the goals and the strategy and the tools in place to just keep seeing those results long term. The clear choice method is actually something that we do with everybody who books in a free 30 minute discovery call to find out more about our Fit Over 40 program. So, you know, regardless of whether someone chooses to enroll in our program or not, we like to just take people through this and figure out where they wanna go, figure out, um, you, know, you know, what they're struggling with right now, what they've struggled with in the past, where they wanna go in the future, and then what might be stopping them from achieving those results because we want to find out, can we help people before we allow them to enroll in the program? So if, if you are interested about just chatting to one of our coaches and um, you know having somebody take you through this goal setting process one-to-one, -one, again, just go to www.fit40info.com and you'll be able to book in a call and get all of the details of that for free uh, on that site. So that brings us to tactic number 11, which is to get the accountability and support so you don't give up when life gets in the way. So a lot of people we work with have, you know, they, they've decided to lose weight many, many times only to give up after a couple of weeks. And usually this is when life gets stressful. So work might get stressful, family life might get stressful. Um, they have a bad week, they go off track and then they think, sod it, what's the point? They allow themselves to go off track. And then because of that, the results, they take a step backwards in terms of results. And before they know it, they're back at square one having to start all over again. And for many women over, over 40, life is just not as straightforward, it's not as simple as, as it once was. Like I, the women that we work with, I think their lives are incredibly busy. They're way busier than my life. Um, they have loads and loads and loads of stuff going on from work to family life. Um, and that's where accountability can be really, really helpful. So at work, for example, you've got your boss, uh, your colleagues, anybody else, business partner maybe to answer to. And if you just decided not to show up for work, people are gonna notice. People are gonna start phoning you, they're gonna start texting you, they're gonna start trying to get you back into work, asking you why you're not, why did you not come in today? What was the reason for that? But in your health and fitness, a lot of people just try to do that by themselves because they feel like they should be able to figure it out by themselves. Um, and, I, and I completely get that because a lot of the women that we work with have had great success in their career without much help. They've had great success. They've got amazing family lives. They haven't needed help for that. And they want the same to happen with their fitness. They want to be able to just figure that out as well. But losing weight over 40 is just, it's not the same thing. So not only does losing weight over 40 require a very different approach, but when you've got no one else to answer to, so when you haven't got a boss to answer to, when you haven't got family members to answer to, when you haven't got anybody else to answer to other than yourself, it's very easy to fall back into old habits, to undo all your hard work and to end up back at square one. And the more times you end up sliding back to square one and having to start again, the more exhausting it gets and the more difficult it gets to get started again and to, to make all of that forward progress. And that is why we've put together our famous Fit Over 40 program for busy professional women over 40 to help them lose one to two stone and one to two dress sizes in 84 days or less. And I'd say the most important part of the program and why we have so many women succeed with this is because of the level of support and accountability that we offer. So we give everybody, uh, every client that we work with has their own dedicated coach working with them every step of the way, guiding them through that whole process to make sure it's always working for them, to get them back on track if they go off track and make sure that they actually see the results that they wanted rather than being able to, you know, just not stop, stop showing up, disappear and not get the results that they want. So I'm not saying, um, you know, joining this program is going to be the solution to all of your problems. 
Um, I'm pretty sure we could get you the results you want, but I would say tactic number 11 is just make sure you get some form of accountability and support so that you don't give up when life gets in the way. So this could be support from a friend, it could be support from family, it could be support from a coach or a trainer, but you just want somebody there so that on your worst day, when you don't really feel like following the program anymore, you don't really feel like sticking to it, you've got someone there to give you a nudge to help you get back on track and to help you succeed. So that is all 11 tactics and I'll quickly go back and summarize those. Tactic number one, eliminate temptation with the covered cleanse. Number two is to do exercise that optimizes hormones, uh, it helps you turn up and gets the scales moving again, so list training. Tactic number three is to eliminate dieters thinking to defeat self-sabotage, so just making sure that you're working on those negative thoughts. Tactic number four is to focus on quick and easy meals, not complicated, time-consuming diet food. Number five is to shield yourself from stress to avoid emotional eating and drinking. Number six is to create your own ground rules for alcohol and treats, but don't cut them out completely. Number seven is to optimize sleep to reduce cravings and boost energy levels. Number eight is to be flexible with your food choices so it doesn't feel like a hardship. Number nine is to move more outside of your workouts to lose weight without affecting your hormones. Number 10 is to get motivated by setting powerful goals using the clear choice method, or you can use other, um, other ways of setting goals, but that's our kind of formula for it. And then number 11 is to make sure that you've got some form of accountability and support so you don't give up when life gets in the way, because all those other tactics are, they're great, but only if you can stick to them. So those are the 11 top strategies that we use with our clients to help them drop one to two dress sizes over 12 weeks. And if you want to grab a copy of this guide, we have a guide which is basically called What We've Learned From Helping 5,700 Plus Professional Women to Beat Over 40 Weight Gain and Get the Scales Moving Again From Home. So you can get a free PDF guide. You can download, download that by going to www.fit40info.com and on that page you can also get more details of our Fit Over 40 program. So that's all I've got for you today. That's it for this episode of the Trinity Podcast. My my advice for you would be just try and take one or two tips. Try and take a couple of tips from these from this podcast. Put a couple of them into action, and hopefully, that's gonna that's gonna help you get going in the right direction, get get you moving, and set you off on the path to getting the results that you're after. So yeah, that's it for today's podcast. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you again next time. <laughs>